Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA and CSENT video practice question, plus a couple of terms that I call common here on the whiteboard, uh, but they're not as common as you might think. We've seen, we seem to see them a lot, I should say, uh, in our certification studies, but there may be terms that uh, you really don't see outside the certification guides and videos that often. So I want to make sure that you're crystal clear on those. Also, when you get a moment, please do check out at the website my 22-hour CCNA video boot camp and my free OSPF boot camp, uh, both on Udemy. And we've got almost 2,000 future CCNAs in those two classes uh, as we speak. And we'd love to have you join us. Now, today's question, which of the following is true of ISL? Which of these is true of ISL? And it's the dreaded select all that apply. And what I like to do, and believe me, I've been taking these exams for 15 years and I haven't gotten a perfect score yet. I know some of you out there have, but I've never gotten one. There's always a question that throws you a little bit. And what I like to do is eliminate the wrong answers. And in this particular question, you've got a couple of choices, quite a few actually, that are mutually exclusive. If we look at A and D, I mean, both of those can't be right because one says it uses the native VLAN, the other says it doesn't. Now, uh, one term I want to make sure you're clear on is industry standard. Cisco proprietary is self-explanatory. It means only Cisco devices can use it. Industry standard is the opposite of that. That means that, frankly, everybody can use it. And ISL, you know that's a trunking protocol. Remember the other trunking protocol? dot one q yeah that's the you've got to be clear on the similarities and the differences between the two and there are a lot more differences than there are similarities so you've got to be really clear on that for the uh, CSENT and the CCNA exams so let's dive into this question now does ISL first off use the native VLAN or does it not use the native VLAN ISL does not use the native VLAN that's one big drawback with ISL so we're going to take, go ahead and take this answer just straight off the board. We know that is incorrect. Now with ISL, is it the industry standard or is it Cisco proprietary? And ISL is Cisco proprietary. So we'll take the industry standard off of there. And this is what I like to call a two-in-one question or actually a three-in-one question because you're actually being asked three questions. You know, are, out of this pair, which one is true? Out of this pair, which one is true? Well, we've nailed two of those. Now we come to the end of it with ISL. Does ISL add a header to the frame, or does it encapsulate the entire frame? That could have been a little clearer. You're going to watch that, but we'll put only there. So which one of those would it be? Adds a header to the frame or encapsulates the entire frame? And one more problem with ISL is that it encapsulates the entire frame. Let's take just a moment to talk about why a couple of these in particular are drawbacks, because I expect that to be an exam question for you as well, one form or another. The problem with ISL not using the native VLAN is that when frames are going to be trunked, sent from one switch to another directly over that cable, if they are destined, if the frames are destined for the native VLAN, they don't even have a header added to them. They're just going to be sent across as is. And when the receiving switch sees the untagged frames come in, that switch says, oh, okay, these are destined for the native VLAN. Now let me give you a pop quiz. What is the native VLAN? Remember that one? It's VLAN number one. So that's one problem with ISL. So not only does ISL add something to every single frame going across the line, it encapsulates the entire frame. Where .1Q only puts a little header on it, ISL encapsulates it. So remember, we have a cost for everything we do in Cisco, you know, in CPU, in time, in bandwidth, whatever. So you're, you've actually got a lot more work going on here than you need to with ISL because the switch that's going to send the frame has to encapsulate it. Then it's got to send it, and of course an encapsulated frame is a little bigger, it's going to take up a little more bandwidth, and then when it gets to the receiving frame, the, excuse me, the receiving switch, that receiving switch has to open every single one, de-encapsulate it if you will, and then send it on its merry way. So this is why you don't see a ton of ISL, but definitely some good info there for your exam. Lots more good and free info waiting for you on my Twitter account, uh, also on my YouTube channel, 
on the blog and Facebook as well. And also, all of our books are going to Kindle over the next eight weeks. I'm recording this at the beginning of July 2012, and I'm going to have some free CCNA and CCNP books out there for you, as well as a few i got to charge a few bucks for, but I think you'll love the price, and I know you'll enjoy the content. Thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco certification story. I'm Chris Bryant, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.